Hello and welcome to today's webcast pre presentation with uh, Rotten Roos. With us today presenting, we have the CEO Lennart Ebele and the CFO Monica Passanen with us. If you have any questions for Lennart and Monica, please use the form that is located to the right. And uh, with that said, please go ahead with the presentation. Thank you, Martin, and hello everybody to our webcast for the second quarter of 2023. It has been a quarter that was uh, full of activity in order to prepare Rotnerus and continue on our road to improving our competitiveness while safeguarding our financial stability. If we look at uh, what has happened during the quarter, uh, we have accumulated an EBIT of 41 million for the quarter or 190 for the first half of the year. Uh, it is a somewhat uh, pale comparison to 2022, but I think if you look at the historical figures, especially for the first half of the year, it uh, stands well. We have a continued solid balance sheet that gives us the freedom uh, and the possibility to do necessary investments to continue our competitiveness. We've worked hard with controlling our costs. That is the things we can control. That has kicked off last year with the closing of the groundwood line. Uh, it uh, also led to an overview of our overheads in central functions and support functions. And now, lastly, we had an organizational review of the Valvig mill that also has impacted the results of the second quarter. With having done all that, we are close to reducing our headcount with 20%, which is, of course, always very hard and tough. We try to do that as respectful as possible for our employees. And the majority of this could be solved through early retirements. The packaging JV in Poland is proceeding. We are in the phase of uh, sourcing all the necessary equipment, and that will then be delivered and installed. Uh, in the coming time. We've also uh, done a couple of investments earlier on in this quarter, which have been uh, announced previously. More CTMP pulp and Rottenroos mill, a renewable electricity production from solar panels. And towards all, the end of the quarter, we have uh, signed a deal for long-term PPA, eight and a half years from 2025 for some 30 gigawatt hours on an annual basis, which would correspond to close to 12% of our electricity consumption. And it will be green electricity with the corresponding guarantees of origin. So all of that uh, has been done in order to prepare Rotnerus uh, for the very challenging times that we are in currently. Uh, if uh, those of you who haven't followed us uh, uh, for some time, uh, looking at what is it we do. Um, as being part of the forest industry, uh, we are part of the green transition. We can provide sustainable and renewable products for the market in order to substitute less so sustainable products that have been there for a long time. We are focused on maintaining a robust balance sheet. It's a capital intense uh, industry that we're in with its ups and downs and it's uh, important to make sure that uh, we have a solid situation to do the things that are necessary to develop our operations going forward and i think also now in the weak market situation that we see um, we have strong positions in selected niches filter electrotechnical applications that stand well with their demand while other segments are certainly much weaker when it comes to the demands. And with that, I go over to the market and uh, the current trends and challenges that we see. And if we start off with the quarterly average prices, you see uh, four lines, two at the top, which are a bit uh, bolder. Uh, those are the gross prices for NBSK, that's a softwood in Europe. And the ones in the bottom are the net prices. Uh, and you see that they are diverging more and more as the rebates are increasing year over year. 
and it's more interesting to look at the net prices. So currently net prices are round about where we were at the beginning of 2021 in Swedish Krona still slightly higher um, and uh, of course uh, much lower than 2022 which was a record year. If we look a, bit, a little bit more into detail and how these prices have developed on a monthly basis as well as how the stock levels have developed, you see that stocks has risen dramatically. They are now over 55 days for all grades for the producers, uh, which is a record high level. And that has led to a sort of a depressed market situation, not the least in Europe, which currently is probably the, the least favorable market when it comes to the price development. China still has lower prices and China is the biggest market for market the pulp. It has bottomed out earlier uh, this year and turned around, especially for hardwood grades, where we've seen price increases coming through, and that has led to some increase in demand in China, and deliveries have been picking up, whilst the European prices still are on a downward trajectory. Uh, and we have to see how that will continue going forward. Um, looking at the European market and uh, the paper and board production in Europe. Uh, you've seen this slide now for some quarters, and we see a continued trend here where the board and packaging segment is increasing as its share of the total market, while the paper is decreasing. Uh, that was one of the reasons why we closed the groundwood line and also investing in more CNTP as the uh, mechanical pulp is skewed to the board and packaging market. And although it is currently in a weak state, I'm very convinced that uh, this will turn around once the supply chains have been emptied out. And uh, then we are ready with our grades for our customers. More in detail uh, into this year's development, generator may so far a decrease in pulp and paper of minus 17 and a half percent. A lot in graphical papers, uh, 25 or less. So, and but also packaging has had a couple of tough months where we hear anecdotal uh, descriptions from our customers and downwards in the supply chain that uh, the stocks are full and they have to be emptied before ordering can pick up again. If we look at how that translates into pulp supplies, we see now that uh, China here more to the right has had a good start into this year versus last year. Uh, delivery there have increased, as I said earlier, there we had a clear bottom uh, for hardwood pulp, whereas Europe and North America still at higher prices compared to China uh, are working through the stock levels and we see prices declining and that is of course not triggering any purchasing activity until we see that prices will bottom out and then re activity will return. And as a consequence of that, uh, we have uh, diverted some of our sales to other markets. Europe is our biggest market with 67%. We have been successful in doing so, um, but it takes a little bit longer time for the product to reach the customer. It takes longer time for the invoicing. And thus there has been a gap between production, which has been good in our mills during the quarter versus the invoicing. Um, but we see that that has picked up towards the end of the quarter and continued to good in the beginning of this quarter. So I'm sure we will see some more uh, volumes going out from stock going forward. Uh, looking at where we sell our pulp to, um, board and packaging continues to be the biggest part. That is where we can make a difference for our customers. Filter has improved. Filter has been uh, very strong as much as electrotechnical applications. Uh, here we haven't seen hardly any uh, decline in demand during the earlier part of this year. Speciality is stable. We were able to find some new outlets within tissue. And of course, the printing and writing segment is decreasing as we've closed down the groundwood line. And this is for the first half of the year. We still had some deliveries in quarter one of groundwood to printing and writing, but this will decrease further going on. So all in all, a well-balanced well, well -balanced, uh, 
portfolio of applications that we supply to. And I think uh, this also bears fruit in that we haven't seen too much of a negative effect on our sales. And with that broad overview of the market, I leave over to Monica to guide us through the financials. Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, um, this is the first quarter uh, that we are without uh, the groundwood line. So this, of course, has some impact on, on uh, our waterfall. Um, one impact is that when we are selling only the TMP and NBSK pulp um, or softwood pulp, we get a better um, price. Uh, price mix, uh, product mix, and also with higher margins. Um, and uh, so that we can see in price and currency, but looking at the products that we are now selling, uh, we also actually have an, a higher price in, uh, in both US dollars and Swedish crowns quarter on quarter. Uh, on the volume side, um, as Lena just mentioned, uh, we have had good production, uh, but the negative impact uh, comes from a delay in being able to deliver and invoice the products, uh, which we believe will happen now in the quarters and months that are coming. The really big impact for this quarter is the variable cost increase, and uh, the majority comes from the cost of wood. Um, it is a twofold um, impact. Uh, the prices in Sweden, the domestic prices have increased. Um, there has been a high demand and uh, especially at the beginning of the quarter, um, there was a, a lack of supply, which then led, uh, led us to the second part that is influencing our, our wood costs and that is a need for increased imports. Uh, so we had a, a more unfavorable mix in that respect. On the fixed cost side, um, we have been able to mitigate the impact of inflation and much of this is thanks to the um, organizational review and, and the program we have had ongoing since last year. Uh, out of the 20% the decrease in personnel, approximately 10% um, has materialized by this quarter. And uh, in the item other, um, we have um, provision for additional redundancies at, uh, at Valvik Mill, which has affected the result in, in the second quarter. So we have gone from 219 to 41 million. And if we look at the half year, uh, we see a very similar picture. And the big difference is, is, is really that in, in the first quarter, we still benefited from, from higher prices uh, and the price levels were higher uh, in the beginning. On, on the variable cost side, um, we had quite high chemical costs in the beginning of the year. That is something that has come down throughout the quarter and they are quite closely connected to energy prices, uh, which have come down. If we look at a bit of a historical view and looking where we are coming from, we see that the record quarters that we are comparing against this is really Q2 last year. Um, but on a more, more um, looking back uh, some years, we can see that, that these are more normal levels. Uh, uh, looking at our balance sheet, um, we have a very strong balance sheet. We had a net cash position of 274 million at the end of the quarter and the equity to assets ratio was uh, 65%. Um, looking at, at the actual cash during the period, uh, we have paid a dividend of 214 million. So that's a, a fair amount. On the other hand, we have the benefit of our uh, financial derivatives throughout the year. When we close the uh, groundwood pulp line, we had excess uh, electricity hedges uh, that we locked in and uh, we are now uh, uh, seeing them maturing each month and uh, the positive cash flow effect is 38 million per quarter. The actual effect in the PNL was uh, taken last year. 
Um, during the quarter, we also refinanced uh, our long-term loan. Uh, it is a facility of uh, 250 million Swedish crowns, um, uh, a fixed loan of uh, 100 million. Um, that is what we have drawn, and that is our in our balance sheet right now. And then we have a revolving credit facility of an additional 150 million, which we can draw on where needed. So all in all, we have a very um, stable financial um, position going forward. Thank you, Monica. And uh, looking into how we see the future, uh, despite the challenging times we are in currently, we have a very positive view for the need for renewable fiber-based materials. Uh, this is coming from various different fields of applications, uh, mostly linked to a global increased uh, population, uh, globally increased disposable income, which is asking for more sanitary and tissue products. The e-commerce is here to stay. We see how that is uh, creating demand for packaging, corrugated as well as board. We have a transition to renewable energy that is uh, asking for more transformators and for more cables. And here are e-grades and electrotechnical uh, pulps are making a difference as they are one of the cleanest pulps in the market for these applications. And of course, the general trend towards a more sustainable society where we participate in with our own molded fiber packaging business, which is underway. And some more words about the uh, Rotten Roost packaging and the JV that we have in Poland. As I've said initially, the project is on its way. Uh, we are one of the leaders in this market with a top quality for food packaging that does not need to be frozen, that has a prolonged shelf life thanks to the modified atmosphere that you can pack it in within our molded fibers. Uh, all of this and, and our technology and position in the market was confirmed through our participation at one of the globally largest packaging fairs, Interpack, in May earlier this year with a great success. And that, of course, gives us confidence with our uh, focus and uh, investment in this area, which also will create a, a broader portfolio of businesses in the future for Rotten Roof and make us less of a pure pulp player. To summarize the, then, uh, the quarter one, uh, as you've seen, we have a continued strong balance sheet with the equity over asset ratio of over 60%. We're working hard on proving our competitiveness, both by controlling our costs as well as uh, investing in our assets in order to increase the capacity without increasing uh, fixed costs, more pulp with the same headcount, uh, own energy production, and an uh, upgrade of our um, system in Valvik. And of course, the continued uh, focus on molded fiber, which is leading to a transformation of a pure pulp player in the future. So this gives us the confidence that we will get through these very challenging times. The result as such for the second quarter is a disappointment, but we know where it's coming from. It's largely related to the current state of the European pulp market. And as we've seen historically, the pulp market goes ups and downs. And I'm, I'm confident that there will be another up go going trend once this downward trend is broken. So with that, I'm opening up for questions and uh, leave uh, the word back to Martin. Please, Martin, give us some questions. Thank you very much for that presentation. And like I said, we'll jump into the Q&A section now. We'll start with the first question. The biggest negative impact on Q2 EBIT year on year is the variable cost inflation. Can you give a picture on the sequential inflation first half versus the second half 2023? Um, I'm not exactly sure what is uh, being asked for, but um, 
um, as uh, as we pointed out earlier, the the biggest uh, change is the wood cost, and it's not only connected to inflation. It it is a bigger picture of supply and demand. Um, the the total supply of wood has been impacted this year by um, on a more on a bigger scale um, by no wood coming from Russia and Belarus into Finland, which is uh, then also impacting the balance in in Sweden. There has also been fewer fellings in in uh, from the Swedish suppliers in the beginning of the year, and all this has led to a, a squeezed supply situation, but uh, still a good demand. And this is what we saw for for a big part of the of the first half of the year then towards the end or 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 the first six months towards the end of this period we have seen that this has changed and there has has been actually a very good supply of wood so i hope that this answers the question thank you monica for that answer and we'll take uh, the next question here which i believe you answered but maybe you can elaborate Given the current economic climate, would you say that the demand for your products are increasing or decreasing? I think the underlying demand is there and it is increasing. Uh, what we're seeing is a current squeeze where, you know, supply chains have been elevated during and after the pandemic. Uh, there have been logistical issues. Uh, we all hear how, how long uh, delivery times of cars has been. Uh, semiconductors have been a scarce source of uh, material into any kind of uh, production and all of that has led that uh, an inflation in, in um, stocks along the entire supply chain. This is easing up, uh, consumption is going down due to the uh, lesser availability of money, higher interest rates, uh, but in general there is a trend towards sustainable products there is a trend towards fiber based products and and once these uh, supply chains are back in balance uh, i think we will continue to see a good demand for our and our customers products thank you for that we'll uh, move over to the next question here the pulp price is uh, falling how does that affect the uh, rules exactly yeah, well, it, it's um, uh, maybe a quite quite easy answer is that if the prices are lower, it will affect our, our bottom line. Uh, maybe it is a, a, a bigger question as well. When the prices are falling, it will affect uh, uh, also uh, the demand for pulp and 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 which uh, or, or the reason for the falling prices is actually that demand is falling and it can be different in different sectors and like we pointed out we see a good demand um, from our niches the electrotechnical applications filters to some extent uh, uh, the board applications um, but of course also in the sectors where we have good demand we see falling prices and, and this has an impact on our, our bottom line which was also seen in the result for the quarter and uh, what risks do you see that could lead Rock Rose to not reaching uh, your goals for 2023? I think we all have been very much aware of the kind of risk that nobody can foresee during the last three years, a uh, global pandemic, uh, uh, war in the middle of Europe. Um, so, you know, it's difficult to, to foresee the future. What we do is we focus on the things in our daily operations that we can focus on that keep us motivated and doing the best for Rotnerus to maintain our competitive uh, position. And that is what we're doing. And uh, usually things fall into place if you work hard on a systematic and structured way on the things that uh, you can impact. Thank you. We'll take the next question here. Is there something that you're excited about for the in the in the remainder of uh, 2023? I'm very excited about the, seeing how the Polish uh, plant will develop and uh, actually evolve. Uh, um, 
also how our investments will fall into place. Um, so I think with the sort of production basis that we have now and uh, the records we have seen on daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, that will continue. Uh, we will see that the organization will come to gather closer as, as now every uncertainty has been taken out. Everybody knows that there is a place for them and what place exactly it is. We are starting a educational program for those who have to shift uh, their, their position. So I think uh, we will, as a company, come closer together to really tackle the challenges that lie ahead and uh, deliver on the investment plans that have been taken and, and thus create a position of strength once the uh, market will turn around. Thank you. And we'll take uh, the final question here. What can investors expect of uh, Rotten Roos in uh, 2023? A company that is uh, ahead of the curve. We have early identified uh, challenges that will come. We have acted upon them. We will do our best to maintain a stable financial situation and, of course, uh, make our utmost to create shareholder value by long-term stable results. And uh, the remainder of 2023 is the beginning of that journey. So uh, I hope we can uh, motivate everybody to be part of this uh, journey going forward. Okay. Thank you very much, Lennart and Monica, for that presentation and uh, answering all of our questions. And uh, a big thanks to all of you who tuned in for today's uh, webcast with Rotten Roos. I hope you have a great rest of the day. And until next time, thank you and uh, goodbye, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice summer.